Hi, this is Jill Bates, and I'm presenting today's Wednesday webinar titled Overview of BrightBytes Clarity. BrightBytes Clarity is a technology survey for schools that was purchased by ESU8 for use by all of the school districts within our seven county area. We purchased BrightBytes Clarity last spring on a three contract. So for the next two and a half years, your school districts have the option to administer this online survey to your teachers and your students. The survey links technology with learning. It will give your district insights to inform high impact actions to gain a deeper understanding of what matters most and how to drive improvement in student outcome, measurable improvement that is. BrightBytes Clarity is very, very easy to use. There is no hardware that is needed, no configurations are needed. Everything is fully managed online. It, the site is secure. In fact, it has bank grade encryption. It's 100% online, which is um, automatically updated every month. And it's also optimized so that it can be viewed on any kind of device, your computer, tablet, iPad, iPhone, optimized for viewing on any mobile device. Also, there is a secure social layer that is embedded into the Clarity platform that promotes networking amongst users across the nation. The CASE platform has four domains classroom, access, skills, and environment. And it's upon this research-based platform that the Clarity Survey is based. When you first log in to Clarity, this is the page that you'll see. This is actually the social area, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, but we are going to focus on the data button, which will be right up here at the top. When I click on the data button, I see the case dashboard. This is the main area with all of the um, analysis data. You can see that there is a color-coded banner. Um, the, the color that we see is gold. You'll see that there are also colors uh, red, green, and yellow, and some blue available on this um, report that we're seeing right now. If I hover over this rainbow over to the left-hand side, I get the case score legend. And you can see that there are five colors, beginning with gray and moving up to blue. The case score legend starts with uh, the lowest rating of 800 and goes up to the highest rating of 1300. Actually, at this site, um, if we go back one page, oh, go forward one more, um, here is the number right here. This is the case number, the overall case score for all of the schools that have um, taken the survey. This is the only time that we're going to see that number. We might see um, the number, the overall case number in other areas, but basically, we are just going to see the colors from now on, okay? So there's the legend, and there's a, a review of what the colors mean. There's a lot of information here within um, this initial dashboard. And we're going to start over here by clicking on this little button that says More, and we are going to take a quick tour of this platform. Okay, so with the tour, they're going to help you get started with the platform and with the dashboard and learn how to use it. You can easily find your place by looking at the breadcrumb trail that will appear up at the top of the screen as you work through the data. And I will try to spotlight that as I go through the webinar. You can also um, see your progress, again, both numerically and through the color scale. 
from that beginning gray level to the exemplary blue level. You have some different options in how you'd like to view the data also. If you click on the um, clock up here, you will see that you can view changes over time. If we click on that, it will give us a graph that will start when we initially started with the survey. For us, it was last spring. And you can see that in May of 2014, we had 12 schools that had completed the survey. The case score at that time was 1059. Just yesterday, we had 26 schools that had completed the survey, and the overall case score was a 1057. So you can take a look at changes over time by clicking on the clock. The next option that we have is to look at the data on a map view. So we'll take a look and see what that looks like. Now this might be something that wouldn't be so important for a school district, but for us here at the service unit, we're able to look at a geographic representation of which schools have completed the Bright Bites Clarity Survey. The third option is probably my favorite, and this is seeing your results in a table. Um, right now, we're at um, the, the case platform or the what they call the dashboard. But if we look at it as a table view, we're able to look at this with teacher skills right next to student skills. Um, I think this gives a really good graphic representation of looking at your case data and seeing multiple sources of information all at once. This is um, some case data from some of the schools um, that have completed the uh, survey and you can see that there um, we've got ranges from pink which would be near the bottom up all the way to blue which would be exemplary. Um, the interesting thing when you look at this data is that you can see some differences in student skill levels and teacher skill levels and, and maybe have some discussions on how that will impact um, classroom instruction. You can also zero in on things by clicking on this little slider over here and this is going to let you filter your results. Now if you're a large district this might be helpful. If you're a smaller district, um, you might occasionally use this filter option. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. So if I choose filter, here's a list of some of the schools from ESU 8 who have completed the survey. If I choose filter, then it gives me an option. I can filter by all districts, and I've just selected Nebraska Unified. Then it gives me an option if I want to filter by schools. I can filter by individual schools or I can filter by just keep all schools together. And then I have an option to filter on a time frame. So as we move along in the Clarity Survey, and if you took it last spring, let's say you also give it this uh, later this fall and again next spring because you're trying to track some growth, you'll be able to filter your results based upon um, the time frame too. Right now, since I was in the list view, here are my filtered results in that list view, and it did give me the case uh, results over to the side on the right, which I have hidden with my um, little memo there. So that is filtering. All right. You also, right here at the, uh, the case dashboard, can focus on the right information at just a glance. If you want to know about access, you click on access and it takes you to the access data. If you want to know about the environment, you click on that and it takes you right to the environment da data. This is kind of where all the magic happens. If you'd like to learn more about CASE, you can click up here, either on CASE score or this little I, and it will give you um, just a brief description of what CASE is. Remember, again, it's a research-based framework that um, looks at classroom, access, skills, and environment data related to technology and learning. 
Um, there is a movie. If you click on this area right here, there is just a short little movie that you can um, watch. You could show to your staff, maybe to uh, introduce them to what the Clarity Survey actually is. Okay, so let's go back to the, um, the main dashboard here. Uh, we're in the dashboard, and you can see that we have the four case areas, classroom, access, skills, and environment. So uh, where do we start? Where do we start looking at our data? Well, most of us probably would start with classroom because it's over on the left side, and traditionally we move from left to right. But the Bright Bites staff recommend that you keep classroom until last and focus on access, skills, and environment first. Okay? Um, you'll also notice when you're looking at this dashboard view that this banner that's up here is going to be the color of the overall case score in each of the areas. So when we look at access, the banner will be green. When we look at classroom, it will be pink. When we look at environment, it will be the, that gold color. So if we look at access, and again, this is in the list view, um, you're looking at um, teacher and student access to technology at school and at home. Uh, within this particular district, you can see that um, both teachers and have good access to technology. Um, all of the colors, blue and green, which would be proficient or um, exemplary. When we look at skills, and I'm in the list view, you can see side the teacher the student skills. We're looking at family skills, online skills, and multimedia skills. Um, this skills area takes a look at confidence, that both teachers and students in using the technology and also their frequency of use. Um, it might be interesting to, to note here that uh, student multimedia skills be pretty high. Most of those are green. That's telling us that those students have a lot of confidence in using multimedia, whereas our teachers primarily that, again, will lead to discussions on um, classroom use of technology, maybe uh, lead to some discussions of professional development. What do our teachers need in order to uh, bring their skills up to nearing the skills of the students? Then we'll look, take a look at environment. The environment looks at the culture of the school, um, the culture of the school as it supports the use of technology. You also be, will look at uh, policies, procedures, and practices within the environment, um, questions, as well as technology support in your school building, uh, professional development from the teacher's perspective, and just the beliefs about technology use in the classroom and its impact on education. OK, so we've taken a look at access, at skills and environment, and now we're ready to go back and look at the classroom data. The classroom um, survey asks questions about the four C's. It asks questions about digital citizenship, assessment, and assistive technology. And you can see in this area we're seeing, um, instead of those blues and greens, we're seeing more pinks and grays and golds. So I'm Maybe if this were my school, that might be an area that we would want to focus our attention on um, because we know that the access is not a problem, the support is good, the culture is good, but maybe we want to focus on what's going on in the classroom. Okay, so now we're back at the dashboard again, which is where you're going to be the first time that you would uh, come to this data page. If I want to learn more specifically about the classroom, I can click right in the classroom box, and it will take me to um, a chart that looks like this. Now again, I have a circle there. There's that little eye up there, and if you click on that, 
it will give you the definition of the classroom um, lens or the classroom focus. And then there's also the option to watch a little movie about the classroom. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. So let's go back to this page. Now you can see that there is a plus over here in front of teacher use of the four C's, student use of the four C's, the digital citizenship areas, assessment, and assistive technology. By clicking on that plus, we can expand the information so that we can see that the four C's cover frequency of computer use in the classroom, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. Um, similarly, we could expand the student area or the digital citizenship area. So anytime you see a plus, you're able to expand that, and then you can focus in just on a specific area. So I'm going to click on Teacher Frequency of Computer Use in the Classroom. And here I come to um, what they call the variable pages. Uh, the variable pages take each question and graphically give you the results. Um, if we look up in the upper right hand corner, up by the right arrow, you'll see that there is um, a little scissors. That little icon allows you to copy this chart and download it as a PNG file. So if you wanted to use it in a PowerPoint or a presentation, you would be able to easily get that information. Okay, so here, uh, teacher reported frequency of student computer use in the classroom. 56% of the teachers say that students are using computers almost daily. A feature of this variable page is the ability to compare different survey results. And within Clarity, um, you can do a no comparison, which is the, the graph that we're seeing right now. You can compare it with the students in your school that have taken the survey. You can compare it based on how what the answers were six months ago or a year ago, depending on how long your school has been using Clarity. You can compare it with all the teachers across the state of Nebraska. How did they answer this question? Um, and there are a lot of teachers across Nebraska. Right now, I can't think of the exact number, but it's a very significant number. Or you can compare it with all of the teachers across the nation who have taken the case um, survey. We're going to compare it with the students, and we'll see what happens. So if we compare it with the students, and these are in the teachers and students in the same school, you can see that teachers are saying st that students use the computer about 56% of the time every day, or 56 of them say that 56% of them say they use it daily. But students are reporting that I use my computer um, every day, and 75% of them are saying that. So sometimes you're going to see some discrepancies in what teachers report and students report. Let's look at another chart. Um, teachers ask students to collaborate online with classmates. 72% say, I never ask my students to collaborate online. What did students say? Well, students say, a um, quarter of us do it at least every week. A quarter of us do it at least every month. Almost 20% of us do it every few months, and only than a third of us never do it. So this data will also lead to some really good decisions, I think. Um, students ask, teachers ask students to use an online space for doc documents. Look at the discrepancy here. Teacher, 60% of teachers, I never ask students to store their documents online. But 65% of students say, I do it weekly. Um, at the end of every variable page will be a data highlight. And um, this is a research citation that just kind of brings everything together and um, pulls out some of the data highlights from that specific area. And here, this one was on collaboration. Why does this matter? Because more opportunities to collaborate digitally foster better teamwork skills. And that is a, a research-based from the National Writing Project just a year ago. 
Um, as you work through the variable pages and you look at the different sources, here's one from the digital citizenship area. Um, you can see um, it's a graphically displayed a little bit differently than just a bar graph. Um, but it gives you good information, and the variety makes it a little bit easier to look at. And if you decide to put it in a presentation, it makes a more attractive presentation for you, too. OK, so we've taken a look at the data dashboard. Now let's take a look at data reports. So if I am on the page, if I am in the data area, I can either be on the dashboard, which is what we've looked at before, or I can look at reports. These seven reports that you see right here are the, the standard reports that come with the product that ESU-8 purchased. Um, there's a curriculum report, a PD report, and you can see all the other ones there. We're going to focus on the, just the professional development report, since that's something that we really look at here at the service unit. Um, so there's a nice report. You can see that this one focuses on skills primarily. Uh, the report itself can be downloaded as a PDF, so you can print it out and share it with other people. It comes out with um, an area of research over here on the left-hand side that um, I think is pretty interesting, as well as some narrative about professional development. There is also an infographic that gathers the information from the survey that your students and teachers took, um, depending on the report itself. This one is, is uh, from the teachers and their beliefs. You can see that um, teachers, 85% of teachers agree that technology can enhance learning. 41% of them believe they have um, some pretty good online skills, whereas 63% of them say my foundational skills are good. You can also see that they have an interest level here for professional development. If we look at the highest area of interest, 78% of teachers are interested in learning more about multimedia skills. And if you think back to that one graph that I showed you, um, teachers self-identified that their multimedia skills were, were lower than those of the students who self-reported. Um, also, you can see that in digital citizenship, only 18% of the teachers who completed the survey said that they are highly knowledgeable about digital citizenship. When we at the service unit look at this and we realize that 640 teachers within our area completed this survey, that tells us that possibly digital citizenship is an area where we really need to focus, as well as maybe working with teachers more on their multimedia skills. Another part of the report um, identifies some of the uh, contributing factors that are contributing to success of the organization. It's always good to look at the positive things. Um, it gives you information in a scatter plot format uh, where we would like to see these scatter plot dots appear in the area where everything is exemplary. Exemplary use of the four C's and exemplary use of uh, teacher foundational skills. So we'd like to see these dots over time move up here. It's just another way to look at the information. And then also at the end of this particular one is a school scorecard. Um, if this were your school's report, you would get it just for yours because this is a service unit report. We got it for all of our schools. But it lists um, all the names of the schools plus the case scores for foundation, online, and multimedia skills, as well as beliefs. So just at a glance, we can take a look at a scorecard. OK, so we have covered the data information. We've looked at the data dashboard, and we've looked at the data reports. Now we're going to look at insights real briefly. There's a lot of information here in insights. Um, it identifies the three big questions that the case results indicate that your school needs to look at. We'll just focus again on the professional development one. If I expand that one, I can see um, that those are the areas that is identified that we should focus on. If you click on one of those, you can learn more. There's a little bit, um, just kind of an introductory page here. There are some quick wins 
which gives some examples of things that you could do within that area very, very quickly to maybe see some um, growth. Um, there's also live links in there so that you can get additional information. There's game changers. These um, take a little bit more time. They're more in depth. But again, um, these are all research-based things that you can do in your district to help see some growth in that area. Then they also highlight some different educators from across the nation who are doing some exemplary um, things either in their classroom or their school or their district working with professional development or working with digital citizenship or wherever um, you happen to be looking. Clarity also has a new feature, which is their learning center. Uh, this is just brand new. I just learned about this within the last couple weeks. Um, I've completed the welcome section, which is just kind of an overview of Bright Bites Clarity, and I plan to um, begin the data revolution. Um, these are game-based um, professional online courses that you can take, um, and they're very, very interactive, and uh, I found the review a, a pretty interesting information. Um, this is back to the very first page that you see when you log in. This is their social area. Um, you notice that there is an opportunity for networking by the ability to join some groups. And if you click on View All, you can see that I have joined the Customer Care, the Bright Bites Summit, the Data Collection Corner, and the Digital Citizenship Forum groups. This get, these give me an opportunity to network with other users and ask questions and share best practices. Um, there is one that is a one-to-one -one forum. I have not joined that yet. I wanted you to see what that would look like, um, that there's a, uh, the icon there. If I click on that, I can join it, and then I can share best practices and learn from others across the nation. Also up here, you can go in and um, look at your profile by selecting your name. Uh, once you identify your role within the school, when you log in, the news information that is here will be, it will be um, personalized to you based upon your interests and your role in the school. So if you're a tech coordinator, you would see different things that I'm seeing um, as a service unit administrator. Also, I wanted to point out this add-ons real quickly. Um, this is under the profile area, too. So if you click on add-ons, you'll see an option to add a new report. This is a new report that is free. So if I just click right on that purple button, that will add the report for parents into my data reports. And I just real quickly want to show you what this would look like. So you get a nice PDF, again, with uh, the narrative beginning, an infographic using the data that they believe parents would be most interested in, and a list of the school strengths. So you could share that information about Clarity uh, results with your parents if you'd like. Stephen Stradley is our Bright Bites Clarity account representative. If your school has not scheduled a survey and you would like to, please contact me. I'll put you in contact with Stephen, and he will get you all set up. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to just email me, jbates at esu8.org. And I'd just like to mention that um, next week's Wednesday webinar will be Accommodation versus Modification, presented by Kathy Fiala, who is one of our school psychologists. As always, we um, record our webinars and post the recordings under the webinar button on our ESU8 homepage. So uh, thanks for listening, and um, please share this information with the other people in your school. I think Bright Bites Clarity is a great tool, and I know that it would be of value to um, all of our schools in the area.